Hello, my name is Lee Schwan He, and I'm here to welcome you all to the Deaf What Project. Today we are interviewing Leslie Ward, who works as a lab manager at the Immunology Lab at the University of Toronto. Thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you for the invitation. Great, so we have some questions for you. The first question is how have you been doing since the pandemic started? I've been good. Also, it's been tough due to balancing my work life plus my family life, right? You know, we've been staying at home, working from home, the kids are at home with online school, so many distractions. I'm sure I'm not the only one who experiences this. Many parents share that mutual experience. You've been having some self-care, right? Yes, we have to make sure boundaries are set because of work. And it's such a blur when we're always home. The kids are always here. It's different. It's been 18 months so far. Some pros, some cons. How are you feeling now? Good? Pretty good. Really, I go to work in person once a week, which means I get a break from the routine. And I'm lucky to be able to get out of the house. This gives me some time on my own at work, and then I have the rest of the time with the kids. Now we're returning back to normal. I'm back at work more. My husband is back at work more. The kids are back at school. It feels more settled instead of worrying about whether or not the school is open or not. Now that things are moving along, life goes on, it's nice. It's true. My next question for you is what is the inspiration behind you becoming a technician of immunology? Really, there's no inspiration behind it. It was just that I needed a job, you know what I mean? When I had finished my master's, at that point I contemplated what the future held for me. And I realized that I like hands-on type of work. So, a technician, that's hands-on and something I like. At the time, I was like job searching, so I needed a job for now. I sent in my resumes and application. I applied to the University of Toronto and I was hired. Cool, I like the job. The projects are interesting. The field of immunology is so fascinating. So different from what I had studied from my master's degree. So I thought I'd just stay for one year, but I just continued to work there and it's my career now, looks like. So are you currently satisfied with your career? Yes, because I feel sometimes it's mundane, but you're always learning something new. And I've been working there for 15 years now. I work on various projects every day. It's not the same. 10 years ago, I learned from that experiment and now I am learning new things. For example, COVID-19. There's always new information to learn, so I'm very interested. Some tasks are mundane for sure, yes, but again, that's most jobs. I keep on learning. My boss continues to give me new responsibilities, so there's no boredom at work. I really like my work environment and the people I work with. The people there are really cool, diverse, and talented. We get to learn each other's opinions and perspectives. My boss is really great too. It's a really great environment for me. So many positives at this job for you. Yes, that's good. The next question, you work as a lab manager. What exactly do you do and how do you communicate with hearing coworkers? The majority of my work is hands-on, which means I basically manage the lab making sure everything is running in order. One example is taking inventory of orders. My boss also gave me the responsibility to renew annual orders. I support students or postdoctoral fellowships with their projects for mice work and whatever else I can assist with. And in terms of communication, I can speak so it is easier for me and for the people that I work with. They understand that I can lip read. They're also willing to write back and forth to each other. And now with COVID, we use messaging with the Slack app all the time. That's what we use for discussions with the team. It's pretty convenient. I am being involved, not being left out. 
Before COVID, they'd have meetings, and I wasn't an active participant. Because it was so difficult to secure interpreters due to lack of knowledge of scientific terminology, in the past, whenever I planned to attend the meetings once in a while, I'd book the interpreters myself. With COVID and Zoom, we have meetings online with captions, but it's not that effective. Captions don't work well. So our boss asked students to type down the conversation for me. Communication at work is very effective. It's very interactive. The environment and people I work with are very cooperative and very understanding. It's nice to see that. It's nice to see your coworkers put the effort in to make sure you're included. Can you tell me more about your work experience during COVID? So because my lab does research, we were not completely shut down. The reason for that is we work with living animals, so we couldn't abandon them. So during the first lockdown in March 2020, we had a list of emergency contacts who could go into the lab in person. For some students, they couldn't put their projects on hold as they were of medical urgency, so they went into the lab. As for myself, the university considers my position as essential, so I was supposed to go to work on a daily basis. However, my boss and I reached an agreement. Because I had children at home, we agreed that I could work from home. My boss was happy to support me, making sure that I didn't have to stress over my family and what I would do. I work from home at my computer, where I create orders and do office-related work. It's easy now that we're paperless. Very true. So for the majority of the time, I work from home and once a week I would go to work in person. I'd make sure everything is in order. And so that continued until the lab was reopened three months later in July. And at that point, it was reopened at 25% capacity. Due to the capacity limitations, I decided to continue working from home. So the students have the ability to go to the lab as their work needs to be done. I completely understand. So I continued to come in person once a week, so that all works out perfectly in these past 18 months. Wow, it doesn't feel like 18 months. Is there anything that you want people to know about COVID-19? So far, there's been a lot of discussion surrounding the COVID-19 vaccine, and there's some debates around that, obviously. Of course, my lab supports the vaccine as we've done research on immunology. My boss is very vocal about it. They've been on the television, radio, and just trying to educate the public around the COVID-19 vaccine and the importance of it. I feel that the problem is with social media and some news sources sharing misinformation or false information. Some people believe COVID is fake. Okay, if you say so. We just did 18 months of lockdown. So I feel it's really important not to rely on social media as your source of information. Where should we look for information? For example, you can get information directly from the healthcare system, hospitals, doctors. People like my boss read published articles by experts in newspapers and journals not from social media or from TikTok, not these kind of resources. I understand that finding the right information about COVID can be overwhelming. There's new information popping up every day. For some deaf people, the language may not be accessible to them. So they can reach out to me if they want, and I can explain it more clearly. I did that with my friends. There were some misunderstandings and I managed to clear those up. Especially with the vaccine, I know that people are afraid. I know that some of them refuse to get the vaccine because they don't believe in it or they're afraid. And there's different sides to it. 
Of course people are nervous, which is understandable. Some people don't believe in the vaccine, and that's fine. I want to educate and convince people that it's safe. I'm knowledgeable about it. I try my best to share my understanding of COVID knowledge and make sure that they're comfortable with it. I hope. I know that a few of my friends had heated discussions, but then as they learned more about it, they understood what I meant and they believed me. They are no longer misunderstood or relying on fake news to empower themselves. I feel a responsibility as a scientist to educate people about COVID, you know? Yeah. Deaf people are looking for accessible resources in ASL and without them, it's hard to filter out which news is real or which is fake. That's true, right? It's hard because there are not many deaf people involved with science. I don't know of many. I understand it's hard to identify which information is accurate and which is rumored. And you know, the broken telephone. Yes, how things get twisted. That somebody tells one person and then they tell the next. You know, that. True. Moving to the next question, what gives you joy? Right now, my family and my friends. When lockdown happened in March of 2020, there were memes about parents being stuck at home with kids 24 seven. And they were true, at least for a few months. Feeling frustrated, disorganized, interruptions at work. With some time down the road, I'm used to having the kids around all the time. I don't mind it. I realized that pre COVID, my husband and I were so busy with work, plus commuting, the time spent with our kids wasn't really quality time. It was just checking off the box from the to-do list. COVID forces us to settle down, staying at home rather than going out and doing activities and socializing. At that time, we saw our kids every day, having conversations and discussions with them, not just during specific times, such as homework or meal times. We got to just converse and get to know them as people. It's been very nice. It's also nice spending time with friends. Well, you know, with COVID, we're becoming more cautious of who we hang out with. You don't want to be hanging out in a crowd and you suddenly realize who you really want to spend time with. And I see them because they're important to me. Before COVID, I was busy with appointments. Finally, they asked me and I am able to say yes. I don't have to be like, hold on and check my schedule. There's nothing. I'm like, yes, let's go meet up. It's nice and it makes me so happy. That's good. Next question. Do you have any thoughts you want to share with the hearing world? I've noticed that during COVID, hearing people are more aware. Not everyone, no, but I have noticed a pattern. You know, hearing people are always thinking about communication, especially with speaking, right? They're like, if you can't speak, they'd say sorry and just back off. Be like, oh, it's okay, never mind, and that was the normal. But nowadays, due to mask wearing, people are more aware that there's more than one way to communicate. They know now, with deaf people, they take out a pad plus a pen and write it down immediately. Back then they'd go into freeze mode, they didn't know what to do. Now they know, they use a pen and paper or they use a phone to type things down. Good. Next question. Do you have any thoughts you want to share with the deaf community? For me, as I said, with my field being science, I know there are not many deaf scientists, especially women. Being involved with STEM, meaning if you feel some kind of interest in STEM, I strongly encourage you to cultivate that interest because I feel it's really important for deaf people to become involved with science. It's an interesting field and there's a lot to learn and I'm sure deaf people have plenty to contribute to science as well. I hope there are more deaf people interested. I know some deaf folks may feel that science is too hard and feel oppressed but that's not the case. If you are interested, continue learning. Great, anything else you'd like to add? No, I think we've covered everything.
Good. Well, thank you, Leslie Ward, for interviewing with us for the Deaf What Legacy Project. Also, we would like to recognize the Canada Council of the Arts for funding the project.